Hey everybody, it's Regina. Welcome back. I hope that you all are having a wonderful day. Um, I want to dig into a topic. Um, I know it's going to be good. Uh, it needs to be talked about. It needs to be unwrapped. Um, and I'm going to get right into it, okay? So you saw the title of the video, Mean Girls in the Kingdom of God, okay? Dealing with Mean Girls in the Kingdom. This is a part of us ladies. It comes with the, the package, okay? The Bible lets us know that we are all born in sin and we're shaping in iniquity. So there is a side of us that we have to deal with. I, I think I covered this like in a, a video, a short video that I put up. We have an innate nature. We have a nature about us where we can, um, you know, when it comes to dealing with one another, where we are catty, we are petty, we uh, don't celebrate our sisters, we don't love on them, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the spirit of jealousy easily creeps in. This is a part of us um, that after Christ, after we have been born again, we have to make sure that that side of our human nature is crucified. We have to leave that at the cross. I don't think I've ever even really heard anybody deal with it. Like in my years of growing up, I ain't heard nobody preach it or talk about this. You know, this right here, I believe is a separate work that we have to do within ourselves, on our hearts, you know? It's just, we see how women in the world who are not born again, who don't know the Lord, how they act with each other. Uh, I mean, it's real bad. You know what I mean? Even using the, the terminology, the B word as a term of endearment, which is degrading one to the other, you know, it's crazy. Okay. But this is something that we have to deal with. We can't ignore it. Um, especially in the kingdom of God, we should be able to love one another as Christ has, as he loves the church. You know, we should be able to embrace our sister with our differences, our strengths, our weaknesses, and know that all of us together in our separate, separate abilities, our separate corners, our separate giftings. Okay. We all should be able to come together and make this thing a well oiled machine. Okay. I want to dig into Sarah and Hagar. That's what the Lord brought to my remembrance when I was uh, dealing with this topic and meditating on it. You know how Sarah was believing the Lord for a child. She was not able to bear children. She was unable to conceive. Um, so in her impatience, her being a woman, you know, we had a woman with a man. It's in our nature to want to do everything that we can to make sure that that man is pleased. Okay. We try to keep our parents up. Uh, we try to, you know, be the best wives that we can be. We try to make sure they're taken care of and her, her idea of making sure that her husband was taken care of was by making sure that he had a child, even if it wasn't from her, because she had gotten to the point where she was impatient and she realized, Hey, this may not ever happen for me. So I'm going to take it upon myself. I'm going to do this in my own strength and my own power, and I am going to give my handmaiden to my husband, okay? So the Bible says, you know, that Sarah gave her handmaiden to her husband, Abraham. Abraham goes into her, and they conceive. That's how the Bible literally says it. They conceive a child. And although Sarah... Uh, created this plan because she didn't want her husband to fill a void, although she's still left with a void, right? Um, it backfires on her emotionally. She was not ready for the emotional storm that this was going to create, okay? And after her husband has uh, conceived a, a child with Hagar, Sarah becomes jealous. She becomes jealous because she still has this voice. She's still unable to conceive. Come on, somebody. Let's think modern day. If you're a woman and you're unable to bear a child, right? And your husband slips up you know, and he gets with somebody else and he gets that woman pregnant. And here you are over here having issues conceiving. You're having fertility issues and he done crept out. Although in the Bible story, Sarah gave him permission, but I'm trying to paint the emotional storm that she was under, that she dealt with, that she created for herself. Okay. 
So now she's jealous because this girl is pregnant and you have my life. You have what I want. I'm unable to get that, that experience. So she is now jealous and she has to sit in these feelings and these feelings become unbearable to her. So what does she do? She sends Hagar away. She sends her away. Like she couldn't stand the sight of him. You and your baby get out. Okay. I don't want anything <laughs> to do with you. She sends him away. But then, you know, the Bible continues on. This is in Genesis chapter uh, 16. If you guys want to go back and read it in um, your spare time. But the Lord sends an angelic messenger to Hagar and he tells her to go back uh, to your handmaid and basically go back in humility, do what she needs you to do. Um, and I'm going to work every, the Lord is going to work everything out. Okay. And that's kind of how that story ends. But the picture that I'm painting ladies is that. The Lord opened my understanding to not all, un, he opened my understanding in the fact that not all women who are mean girls started out that way. And I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to share my story, okay? They didn't start out that way. There are circumstances and situations just as Sarah had to deal with okay and i don't know why i'm getting emotional about this this is so crazy i did not expect my eyes to be watering but there are so many of us who have dealt with uh the issues of life okay life has dealt crazy hands and i'm, I'm dealing with women of god okay Dealing with women in the kingdom, although this pertains to all women, okay? Life deals hands. Some, we have, uh, you know, been dealt. We had no control over them. Some situations we have walked ourselves into. Um, but, but sometimes it's situations and circumstances that create the person who we have become today. Okay. Let's think about childhood traumas. Okay. Molestation. So many girls are molested. So many girls are molested by family members. You know, you have young girls that are in the foster system. Um, my heart, I'm getting ready to get off topic here for a second, but I have literally been on my face crying out to the Lord for about the past six months about the children, y'all. I cannot, that burden won't lift off of me. And more importantly, just children that are in vulnerable uh, situations, p children that are in foster care, um, you know, who are unprotected, children who just want to be at peace. They just want to be kids. But every night you have creepers and perverts coming into their rooms and fondling them and molesting them. Guys, uh, I'm off topic just a second, but please, please help me carry this burden uh, for the children all over the world. Okay. Like this is a problem. It's a problem. DC, DCFS, they dropped the ball on so many occasions, you know, so I'm really bombarding the Lord for children. Okay. But let me go back to my original point and what I was saying, uh, women, girls, men too, but I'm specifically dealing with girls and women. We are, are dealt hands and molested, physically abused, mentally abused, um, you know, mistreated, uh, you're bullied inside your own homes. Uh, some women don't have mothers. So you're, you're left with a mother wound. You're left with that, that, that void of never having a mother to affirm you, never having a woman to show you how you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to act. Okay. Some women don't have, or did not have a father growing up, you know, so you don't, didn't have the affirmation of a man, you know, the first man that you should have ever fallen in love with, which should have been your dad. You didn't have that luxury, you know, so I'm, I'm painting a picture of life and the, the, the hand that it deals, you know, some you, you've gotten grown, you crossed over into adulthood and, um, you find yourself being a single mother, you know, and you're trying to figure out, Lord, what, what did I do to deserve this? You know, you grinding, you're going to work, you're punching the clock 40, 50, 60 hours a week just to make ends meet. So these are the hands that life deals. Okay. You get in relationships with men that, that say, I love you and I, I I'm going to always be there for you. But then you find yourself in a physically abusive situation. You find yourself with a narcissist, somebody 
somebody that's beating you down mentally, somebody that's beating you down emotionally, and you you you've lost yourself. Okay, you've lost yourself. You're trying to figure out who am I? Okay, I don't even know who I am anymore because I am under such an iron thumb in this house. Like there's no peace, no peace of mind. Come on. This is the veil that the Lord had to pull back and allow me to dissect and digest that not all mean girls started out this way, okay? And this is where you begin to see things through the eyes of Christ. It's very easy for us to say, oh, she stank. Who she thinks she is? I don't got time for that. I'm going to set her straight because da 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 Y'all know how we can be, okay? Y'all know how we can be. But the Lord literally had to sit me down and help me to get through this. And say, Regina, they didn't all start off like that. It's a, a, a form of protection. After, you can only take so much pain, guys. You can only take so much offense. You can only harbor so much uh, resentment, you know, to where the only thing that you can do is put a guard over your heart to protect it. That is how mean girls are birthed and created, okay? I'm pretty sure Sarah did not know that by her trying to even look out for someone else, her husband in that situation, that she would suffer so much more, okay? And she did not know that that would turn her into a mean girl because it did. She sent her, her handmaiden away, she sent them away. You and this baby, go. I don't want to see any parts of you. A mean girl, right? So maybe this has been your story. Maybe this has been, you, you're someone today that you don't recognize, okay? And you're like, how did I get here? I come to let you know, and this is not even taking a turn, you know, from what I originally wanted it to be. But there is healing for you. Woman of God, there's healing for you. Let the Lord go back down the telescope of time and peel back those layers and let him minister healing to you. Let him go back to that little girl. That little girl that felt unprotected. That little girl that felt neglected. That little girl that felt that no one, no one is for me. Let him go back and deal with that. Sometimes life keeps life in. We go down the years and we just got to keep pushing, right? We have to keep pushing. And, and we, we get to a point where... We realize I have so many issues. Like I need a time out just for healing. I come to let you know that there is healing for your sorrow. There is healing for your pain. God wants to get in those deep places of your heart. Those wounds, the wounds that have, that have uh, occurred to your soul, that have damaged your spirit. Let him suture those. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Let him apply healing salve to those wounds. I am a living witness that the Lord can do it. I'm a living witness that he will heal you and make you whole, you all. I share my vulnerability, my testimony of being molested and things like that over the years. Okay, that just, I mean, that alone is traumatic. It leaves you feeling filthy. It leaves you feeling dirty. It leaves you feeling rejected and neglected and unprotected. And that turned into low self-esteem, you know, because such a horrible thing has happened to me, right? Then now I just, I couldn't possibly be attractive. Why would anybody lie? me why does anybody even want me you know I'm trash I'm garbage there's so much there's so much that comes with the traumas of life the traumas of life so when you come in contact with women who you know you don't we don't understand the path that they have traveled we don't understand the road that they have traveled. I promise you, not all mean girls are just mean girls. Some of them just like drama. But the Lord literally had to open my eyes and say they didn't. They didn't. If you think about the nature of a woman, 
go back. You know what I mean? To think about, I look at my daughter right now. She's six. She's sweet. She's loving. She's kind. She loves affection. She loves to hug. She loves to kiss. Uh, you know, mommy, I love you. Uh, always kissing me on the cheek. Go back to those years. You know what I mean? I, my children are highly protected, you know, because of stuff that I went through. I know what to do. Praise God. Okay. But imagine girls that are not protected. Imagine girls that, you know, have to go and spend a night at Cousin Juju's house because mommy has to work and Cousin Juju is molesting them every night. You know what I mean? If we go back to those, those innocent stages, all girls, the nature of a girl is to love and to, to nurture and to be a safe space. You know, think about little girls and how they are. As you get older, it's the issues of life. Yes, Lord. It's the issues of life that begin to shape and mold this little girl into who she is. Okay? And most of it, she did not ask for. Most of it, she should not even have to deal with. All right? So let us show and operate in the love of Christ. Should you come in contact, show love and kindness. The Bible says with love and kindness, have I drawn thee? Have I drawn thee with love and kindness? Excuse me, you guys. I got kind of interrupted here. My children, you know, real life stuff. But the Bible says with love and kindness, have I drawn thee? You know, so let us take a step back. And sometimes when we encounter these kind of girls and these kind of women, you know, let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. And sometimes all it takes is for you to show love and kindness because some of them don't know what that looks like. They don't know what that feels like. They've never experienced that. They've never encountered that. And we know how in families, you know, generational curses, you're probably everybody mean. All the women are probably just mean spirited, you know, because sometimes if you find one, it's a lot more that follows that trend. Okay, but God had to really open my eyes and I wanted to share that uh, because it's a real thing. It's a real thing just dealing with women, period, because we are difficult sometimes when it comes to rubbing shoulders with each other, getting along, loving on each other, you know, being able to work together, being able to deal, you know, is it can be a lot sometimes. It can be a lot. Uh, and your natural response, your natural human response is to be like, I don't have time for that. I'm not getting ready, you know. But as women of God, as children of God, some not sometimes, most of the times, our response has to be different. It has to be different than what our flesh wants to do, okay? I want to share with you guys uh, how... Um, the Facebook post that I put on my personal page, I was very vulnerable because... I felt myself slipping into the category of a mean girl. I'm very sweet. I'm very loving. Uh, what you see is what you get. I do not change up on people. I do not flip the script depending on who I'm around. I thank God for my nature and who he's created me to be because I am who I am because of Christ, right? Um, my mother was the same type of woman. Uh, we ain't no punks, okay? But we're very sweet, all right? Um... But I found myself slipping, y'all, into this category. And the Lord brought it to my attention. He was like, you cannot become a mean girl. I have a tribe. I have a people assigned to you. You can't afford to let that take over you, okay? And when I did a personal assessment, when I did a personal assessment of this, it was a form of protection, you guys, a form of protection, okay? I'm not going to let anybody else get close to me and break my heart, okay? And I had to really take a step back from that and say, God, you have to help me. You have to help me because there's no way that I can be ministering the gospel. I can be preaching and prophesying and I am a mean girl. Mm -mm. The Lord said, you cannot so I will go on my, my face, you know, day after day, just crying out to the Lord. God, help me to forgive. Help me to forgive. There's one thing about it, you guys. We have to be a forgiving people. 
We cannot hold grudges. Even the people that have cut you the deepest, you have to forgive them. Because Christ forgave, right? And we don't want our blessings hindered. We don't want the things that God has for us to not fall into our hands due to unforgiveness. So we have to learn to forgive those. The Bible says, pray for those who despitefully use you. Though, yeah, despitefully use you. The word of God says, I want you to pray for them. And I shared the testimony even on how the Lord had to correct me with uh, dealing with attacks in the spirit. Okay, because it's natural. Any form of attack, whether it be spiritual, whether it be natural, you know, when you are feeling attacked in any kind of way, what's your response? To protect yourself by any means necessary, right? So even in coming up under attacks in the spirit, the Lord was like, no, you still got to stand in love. Let me fight your battle, but your response still has to be one of love. Okay. So I recently dealt with it. I mean, I, I felt that thing coming on me, y'all. I felt it because I'm like, nobody else is going to betray me. I am who I am. I don't change up on people. And if I say I love you, I'm going to give you the world. But people out here are built differently. Um, the loyalty of man is trash. Okay. And I believe that it's just because the coming of the Lord is soon. You know, and the Bible says that the love of many will wax cold. So I believe it's just the whole sin nature. It's the cycle where even the, the nature of man is deteriorating, you guys, which is why we see like you can't find people that are trustworthy. You can't find people, you know, that'll keep your secrets. The love of many will wax cold. God is soon to come. So the nature of man has already fallen, but when we have so many people that are living like unrepented lives and people that are, uh, you know, one foot in a church, one foot out and things like that, like you just all jacked up, you know? So we got a whole situation, but the Lord is saying, you, you can only control yourself. You can only control your response. Okay. So I wanted to be vulnerable because that thing tried to grip me. It tried to grip me. And I already have a, a problem where it's not a problem, but people say I look mean, like when I'm just sitting straight face. Um, so that's already an issue. Like I don't, I just sit and smile cause I'm so not a mean person, <laughs> you know, but like it tried to grip me for real, for real. No, I was like, nobody's getting close to me again. I will not allow you to, I will not allow you to burn me, but I'm so glad that I allow Holy Spirit to walk me through that. I'm so glad that I allowed him to open up my eyes so I could see that spirit at work and how it was trying to grip me. It was trying to grip me, okay? So you guys, uh, this topic is just dealing with mean girls in the kingdom. I want to let you know they didn't all start that way. They did it more than likely. Something has happened. Something has happened, which have uh, turn them into the woman that they are today. Okay. So let's walk in love. Let's deal in love. We can't save everybody, right? That's not our job. The Lord didn't call us, but we can pray for everybody. You know, God may assign someone to you, one of these types of women, and you may get a breakthrough, but there are others like this just too much. That's a work for the father. I don't have it. I had energy. Let God do the work. Okay. But we can pray for everybody, but I want you all just to remember, remember the next time that you encounter a mean girl say something may have happened. You know, don't be so quick to be offended. Okay. And we're going to talk about offense too on another time. Cause that's a good one. Um, another video. Okay. Uh, don't allow yourself to be offended. Allow yourself to extend grace and to maybe understand, hey, something tra traumatic could have happened that have turned her into who she is. All right. So you guys, I love this topic. I don't know about you, but it blessed me. Okay. Um, and I want to let anybody know who, you know, you're a mean girl, you know, you're a mean girl, but you also know 
that that's not who you really are, right? I want to encourage you to let that guard down from your heart, okay? Because you can't afford to miss the blessings that the Lord has for you. Being a mean girl can also allow you to miss your husband. Because the mean girls are mean all the way around, so they don't even know how to honor a man. They talk crazy to men. They disrespect them. They belittle them. And ain't a man going to deal with that. All right? So, doll, if you're single and you're looking for a husband, I, I'm praying for you. I encourage you. Let that down. Let God deal with your heart, okay? Let me pray. How about that? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for every woman under the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you for this topic, Lord, this vulnerable topic, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for how you are the God that healeth. You are Jehovah Rapha. Lord God, you know, Lord, the ins and outs, the twists and turns of our very lives. Lord, you know the traumatic experiences, Lord, that some of us have, some of us have gone through. Lord, you know the things, Lord God, that have turned our hearts cold. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing. I pray that you would visit divine visitation to every woman under the sound of my voice, Lord, who, who maybe, Lord, has tried to protect themselves, Lord God, and they have risen up a wall of defense. Lord God, I pray that you allow them, Lord, to understand that you have so much more for them. Lord, let them feel your love. Lord, usher them into the greatest season of forgiveness that they have ever experienced. Lord God, because they need to walk in your fullness. They need to walk in your grace. They need to walk into all the blessings that you have in store for them. So I thank you, Lord, for healing them. I thank you for going back years down the line and ministering to that little girl, ministering at the place where that offense has occurred. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, that you are raising up women, Lord, who will exude your love, who will exude your power, who will exude your grace, Lord God, who will exude mercy. Hallelujah to God, Lord, and I give you the glory and I give you the, the honor, Lord, and I give you the praise. Hallelujah, Lord, for what you've done, even in this lesson. I thank you, Lord, for how you have opened our eyes, Lord, to, to areas in our life that we maybe need to work on, Lord, that how we can love our sisters a little better, Lord, how we can encourage our sisters a little better, how we can embrace them a little better. Father, we thank you because nothing is by happenstance. Hallelujah. And I thank you for the weight of this lesson. I thank you for putting it on my heart because it even blessed me. Lord, and I pray the abundance of blessings upon every woman who will listen to this message in the name of Jesus. Let your love, let your love overwhelm them. In the mighty name of Jesus, and it is so, amen. You guys be blessed, and I will see you next time, okay? No mean girls in the kingdom. Bye.